Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Fagir. I'm one of the co-founders and instructors of FR Camp Courses Academy. Uh, we are glad that we have just finished our 17th uh, F, uh, MR Camp OSCE course in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia from the 1st to the 5th of August 2022. It was our pleasure to meet our colleagues in that um, very um, amazing course. Uh, we spent a whole five days daily. We worked from 7 a.m. up to 9 or 10 p.m. Um, hopefully they will uh, do very well and, and we hope that they pass their upcoming exam uh, from the first attempt. Our topic today, it's just continuation to our previous recording about the maxillofacial examination station. Um, please uh, have a look at that one uh, in, uh, in our previous recordings, which was a video recording um, explaining how to do the maxillofacial examination. But today I would like just to give you the approach to that station because we believe that you should have like a mental model for everything. So you have you should have a theme for any particular station so it will be easy for you to um, to perform and, and to, to gain um, like uh, to pass um, easily. So regarding this station, usually um, we have two types of scenarios for this station, the maxillofacial examination. Sometimes it could be uh, um, a patient presented with history of facial injury, uh, but uh, also it could be someone presented with um, dental abscess, for example. Whatever the scenario, um, once you get inside the station and you will have one minute outside and then you will have seven minutes, as you know, inside the station. So uh, please take, um, first of all, introduce yourself and confirm the patient identity and uh, don't forget to wash your hands and have a look around for any clues around. Uh, this is really important. <clears throat> and we keep saying that every time. Um, and then um, approach the patient. Uh, please make sure you have good communication skills and um, make sure they are comfortable if they need any painkillers and uh, call for chaperone, take consent for your examination and ask them an open question about what's the problem today. So uh, they will tell you that they got an injury to their face, for example. Um, or they feel pain in their face. Um, uh, you can just ask like another question, like for how long, all right? If, if the history is suggestive of significant injury, like road traffic accident, for example, uh, then you could mention that you would like to do a primary survey and also you would like to, uh, to assess the cervical spine using the Canadian C-spine rule. Uh, but if this is uh, mentioned outside, uh, then no need to repeat that again. Or if the history of uh, uh, suggestive of like minor injury, again, no, no need to waste time asking uh, or mentioning that you would like to do that. All right. And then <clears throat> after taking consent, ask the, tell the patient that you would like to examine his face um, and the approach will be uh, as follows. So it will be, my, my, my approach will be, um, I'm gonna do inspection. So I will look, feel, move, and then I will do a neurological examination, and then I will do special tests. So as you notice, this is um, just similar to uh, joints examination. In particular, this is just um, the same as hand examination approach. So um, if you remember the joints, our approach will be look, feel, move, and then special tests. And regarding hand examination, we will have look, feel, move, and then we will do the neurological examination of the hand, and then we'll go to special tests. But for the maxillofacial examination, 
it will be the same. So I will look, that's inspection, and then feel, that's palpation, and then move, and then uh, we'll do neurological examination, and then uh, we will do special tests. So now I will expand more. Regar regarding look, this is inspection of the face. Have a look for any uh, abnormality, like any swelling, any lacerations, bleeding, uh, skin discoloration, deformity of the mid face, like flattening of the mid face, for example. Um, <clears throat> and look to the scalp. Uh, make sure to have a look from the back as well to the occipital area. Um, so you will have complete look to the face and uh, the scalp. If there is any abnormality, then mention it uh, with um, specifically uh, and the location and everything. If there is laceration, mention um, um, the length uh, or uh, also if there is profuse bleeding or not. Um, <clears throat> and then from inspection, move to feel, which is palpation. So always start palpation with checking skin temperature. Uh, for example, facial or dental abscess uh, will have like um, feeling hot uh, on, on palpation. All right. So check uh, skin, tem uh, skin warmth or skin temperature and then check for tenderness. Um, again, start from the back of the uh, scalp, from the occipital area and assess for any tenderness. Uh, moving uh, anteriorly, uh, look for any tenderness, any swelling, any like uh, large hematoma, which might suggest depressed skin uh, skull fracture. All right, and then come uh, and also check the uh, mid uh, the forehead and then the very orbital regions and then the over the cheeks um, and then um, go down and also palpate uh, for uh, the mandible uh, and the chin as well, all right? So this is palpation. And <clears throat> while you are doing that, please, uh, you, you need to speak and mention what's uh, normal and what's abnormal. So now we have completed the look and feel. Now move. Move, it's about feeling the temporomandibular joint. So men, tell the patient that you would like to to feel his uh, mandible and um, press over the temporomandibular joints bilaterally. And meanwhile, ask the patient to open and close his mouth. And this is to check for uh, temporomandibular joint dislocation. So the move here is to assess for T TMJ dislocation. Okay. So now, look, feel, move, um, and now we'll go for neurological examination. This is to assess the sensation over the face. So the neurological examination is to assess the sensation over the, of the face. Um, I'm going to check over the forehead uh, bilaterally. Um, and you need to ask the patient first, show him the feeling of uh, a cotton wool in his forehead in the middle, and ask him to close his eyes and tell him to say yes whenever he feels the, the touch in his face. And start checking the supraorbital orbit, nerves uh, in the both uh, sides of the forehead and then infraorbital nerves uh, over the just below the eyes uh, in the upper part of the cheeks and then the mental nerves. Uh, this is uh, on the chin in both sides. Uh, we have also the supratrochular nerve. So when we assess for the supraorbital nerve on the forehead, we are assessing at the same time for supratrochular nerve as well. So supraorbital and supratrochular trochlear nerves, um, those are checked by the same examination on the forehead. Um, and then you go to the infraorbital and then to the mental nerves. So now we have completed the look, feel, move, uh, neurological examination. Now we'll go to special tests. Special tests 
um i mean examination of the mouth examination of the nose examination of the eyes and examination of the ears uh, and completing by assessing for uh, features of fracture base of the skull so this is these are the uh, special tests in maxillofacial examination uh, so starting the special tests by assessing the mouth ask the patient to open his mouth and have a look inside for any obvious abnormalities any bleeding any laceration any broken teeth any evidence of uh, mandibular fracture or maxillary bone fractures for example and then move and assess the nose look from outside for any wounds over the nasal bridge and for any um, nasal bridge uh, deformity or deviation which might suggest fractured nasal bone uh, but also assess for epistaxis and um, assess for septal hematoma septal hematoma is an ENT emergency and it needs to be aspirated um, immediately otherwise um, if left untreated, it might cause um, subtle nasal deformity. Please Google it uh, and have a look to the shape of the nose because that will lead to ischemia uh, of the nasal septum and then necrosis and that will lead to deformity of the nose and that's medical legal. So you have to document in your notes whether there is um, evidence of um, septal hematoma or not in any patient presented with facial or nasal injuries. Uh, then move uh, to assess the eyes. An eyes examination is just by inspection for any abnormality, for any wounds, for example, or swelling, uh, but also um, quickly assess the, the visual um, acuity um, and then the eye movements, um, if you remember the eye movement test, you are drawing an imaginary H, uh, capital H letter with your hands and asking the patient to keep his head still and follow your finger with his eyes. And meanwhile, ask him if he feels any pain or double vision. So you are looking for extraocular muscles uh, entrapment. All right, and then check the pupils. Uh, using a uh, pen torch um, and assess for any uh, any sucoria which might suggest globe injury then move to assess the the ears and make sure to examine both ears look from outside for any um, bleeding any um, hematoma or lacerations uh, hematoma over the external ear it might cause if not treated urgently again it might cause what's called cauliflower ear and that's the loss of the normal uh, shape of the of the ear from outside so if someone has hematoma over his external ear that needs to be aspirated urgently as well and then uh, take consent and have a look by otoscope inside the ear, assess the external auditory canal, but also have a look to the, uh, most importantly, to the tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane assessment, look for any evidence of ruptured tympanic membrane, especially in the setting of trauma, and also um, look for evidence of hemotympanum, which is blood collecting in the posterior aspect um, of the uh, tympanic membrane. Uh, and this could be a uh, sign of fracture base of the skull. So once you reach this point, I'm sure you are going to remember the rest of the, to assess for the rest of the features of uh, fracture base of the skull. So now mention the, <coughs> uh, the raccoon eye, uh, the patil sign, and also the, uh, CSF, autorea and, and renorrhea, and also uh, 
uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage with posterior border cannot be seen. And by now you should have finished your maxillofacial examination. So um, <clears throat> after that, thank the patient, tell them that you have completed your examination and tell them what's going on, what's your impression, what could be the problems, and then your uh, management plan, uh, whether uh, in, usually in the setting of trauma, you might, uh, you, you will, uh, you might need to do a uh, facial bone x-ray. Um, <clears throat> if there is uh, isolated facial bone injuries, but if you are concerning about head injury, for example, which is not the case in our exam, you, uh, you will do um, a CT facial bones along with CT head if there is concern about uh, traumatic brain injuries. But if something just localized to the face, usually we start with facial bone x-ray, all right? Uh, and be prepared uh, to interpret because the examiner will hand you uh, facial bone x-ray. So um, common x-rays uh, showed in the exam before is a tripod fracture, um, <clears throat> but also um, fracture, uh, infer uh, inferior orbital floor fracture, uh, which is a teardrop sign. Um, <clears throat> so uh, make sure to be familiar with, uh, with these um, type of fractures and, uh, and how to identify them on facial bone x-ray all right uh, and also the 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 black eyebrow sign um, so please make sure to to be comfortable on how to identify uh, all of those in facial bone x-rays tripod fracture and teardrop sign sign of uh, inferior orbital floor fracture and also the black eyebrow sign, uh, which is uh, indicative of blowout fracture. Um, <clears throat> if, if the scenario is, um, and, and mention that you would like, if there is evidence of fracture, then you will speak to the Max Fax team. All right. Um, if the scenario is uh, atraumatic, usually it will be a dental abscess, Again, you are going to speak. Uh, I don't think you need to do any x-rays here, but the plan will be uh, to speak to the maxillofacial team as well. And you might need to do uh, some, if, if the patient is septic, then uh, you might need to do septic screen and consider antibiotics. All right. So, simply, this is the approach to this uh, straightforward station. Again, it's look feel, move, uh, and then neurological examination, and then special tests. Thank you very much.